Good morning, Pastor Jay with your Wednesday devotion. And we're going to continue on in the book of Colossians. And uh, we just finished last time the hymn of Christ, which is that wonderful, concise statement of who Jesus is. Um, that in Jesus, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. So we can look at Jesus when we have questions about the Heavenly Father. And today he continues on with the hope that we have in the church. I mean, what's the church all about? Well, the church is the body of Christ. So let's continue on with this. He says, And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshy body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him. So what does that mean? So what happens is in baptism, we are joined to Christ. We're joined to his death and we're joined to his resurrection. We come up out of the font as new creations. And uh, that's what's being talked about here. The idea that we can be spotless and pure before God because we have put on Christ. And that word present there, uh, it's, a, it's a technical term that has to do with presenting a sacrifice in the temple. It's also about presenting someone before a judge. And so the only way you and I can go before the judge pure and, and, and irreproachable is if we are wearing Christ, as if we are baptized into Christ and have been made with one with him in baptism. And he goes on, he says, provided you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, in other words, in the trust in Christ, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which, he, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. And he goes on in verse 24, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. Now that doesn't mean there's something lacking in what Jesus did on the cross. It doesn't mean that his blood isn't enough uh, to save us and that somehow we have to add to it. That's not what that means at all. What it means is that the faithful carry on the suffering of Jesus uh, as we proclaim his name, as we help those who are in need, as we speak for justice, uh, as we do these things, stand up to, to, to uh, uh, injustice, at those times, we actually carry on the suffering of Jesus because we will be uh, rejected and we will be punished by the world for doing what's right. And as we go on, it says, uh, verse 25, I became its servants, a servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. So that's what God called Paul to do, to make that word fully known to his people. The mystery, now this is interesting, verse 26, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. And what is that? Verse 27, to them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. Okay, what mystery? And he goes on, this is a great memory verse, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, first thing to realize that you there is plural. So Christ in y'all, the hope of glory. So Christ in the church, Christ among his family, Christ is the head of the body. That's the hope we have. The hope of glory is being together in Christ. So it's a community thing. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. Notice that with the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. So it's all about Christ. It's about Christ making us whole and righteous to stand before God in a blameless way. Um, it's also about God giving us the power to continue on with his mission. We're going to suffer sometimes for that. And then finally, that hope of presenting the people of God uh, before him uh, in glory, because it's all about the power to do that that comes from Christ. It's all about the redemption that he's worked in our hearts. It's not it's not about us, it's about him and our faithful trust in him. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this witness in the book of Colossians today. We thank you, Lord, that uh, our hope is in Christ. And that, Lord, we look to him for our strength. We look to him to hold our community together. Lord, bless us uh, as a church and bless us as individuals as we carry on our week in his name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Hope you're having a good week so far. Uh, have a great Wednesday.